Mm-mm. Friends, in 1606, a man ran down the streets of Rome covered in the blood of his slain foe. That man was Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, the brilliant artist who perfected the Baroque style of Chiroschero, in which a visceral light arises from an all-encompassing darkness. What drove Caravaggio to kill? Maybe it was his troubled childhood. He watched half his family perish from the plague before he turned seven. No face masks. Um, maybe it was his rampant alcohol abuse. Caravaggio indulged in wine from an early age, which is seen in his early self-portrait, Young, Sick, Bacchus. Here, Caravaggio depicts himself as the Roman god of wine, and we can see that night after night of drunken revelry has left his skin with a greenish, sickly pallor, while the troubled eyes linger at the edge of mental collapse. Even the grapes are rotting. Whatever the reasons, Caravaggio was a violent man who painted violent imagery. Uh, Roman police archives are chock full of reports of his various crimes and misdeeds. For instance, in 1604, Caravaggio is just chilling at a Roman restaurant when a waiter dares to act rudely. So Caravaggio screams out, Becco fututo, you fucked over cockled! He then takes a plate of artichokes and slams it against the waiter's face. Uh, the waiter tries to press charges, but nothing comes of it because Caravaggio has some powerful friends. This is the Pope, or rather it is a portrait of the Pope painted by Caravaggio. Uh, Caravaggio, the Pope liked what he saw, and generally the Pope and his cardinal cronies really admired Caravaggio's radical art, so they protect him from any serious persecution, which means now you have this violent, mentally unstable man who feels entitled to do whatever the fuck he wants. Should sound familiar. And uh, <laughs> he proceeds to do just that with zero consequences whatsoever. In May of 1605, he is arrested at three in the morning for carrying an illegal sword and dagger. He tells the arrested officer to quote, historical quote, stick it up your ass. Uh, we know this because we have this actual police record from the Roman archives. And if we look at just the lower left corner, we see a police sketch of his actual sword and dagger. And that shit looks sharp. Caravaggio's first recorded usage of that dagger happens in July 1605 when a notary named Pascaloni is just walking down the street. All of a sudden, Caravaggio runs up behind him and like bashes him in the back of the head with the blunt edge of the dagger. Later, it's determined that Pascaloni had insulted a prostitute named Lina who had posed for Caravaggio in his painting of a very busty Madonna holding the Christ child while he stomps the head of a snake. Uh, interesting fact, the monks who had commissioned this painting went on to reject it because in it, the Virgin Mary looks like she is no longer a virgin. Uh, <laughs> At this point in Caravaggio's career, a bunch of his paintings are getting rejected because they're too sexual, too raw, and too real, and that rejection is further contributing to his mental decay. It all comes to a head in May of 1606, when Caravaggio kills a pimp by the name of Renuccio Tamassoni. Here's how that shit went down. Caravaggio arrives at a Roman tennis court accompanied by three friends, including an army captain. Tomassoni is there waiting, accompanied by his brother and two brothers-in-law. Later, these witnesses would claim that a fight spontaneously broke out over a lost tennis game, and that's all bullshit. We all really know what's going on here. These witnesses are seconds in a highly illegal duel to the death. Here is how the duel unfolded. Caravaggio and Tamassoni whip out their swords and daggers. They begin to stab and jab at each other. None of the witnesses interfere. At some point, Tamassoni slips and falls. Caravaggio takes the initiative. He drives his blade downward towards Tamassoni's crotch. Tamassoni desperately tries to get out of the way, and as he moves, the blade enters his inner thigh, cutting his femoral artery, sending blood gushing everywhere. At this point, Tamassoni's brother can't take it anymore. He 
joins the fight. He hits Caravaggio in the head. Caravaggio's army friend enters the fight. It's a full-on brawl, punching and stabbing and madness. Caravaggio is wounded. He runs the fuck out of there, and Tomasoni quickly bleeds to death. Uh, <laughs> so, what caused this deadly duel to happen in the first place? Well, speaking of the aristocrats, some... We don't know what really happened, like, like FYI. We don't know what really happened, but some have hinted that maybe in Caravaggio and Tomasoni weren't just foes, but maybe they were lovers, and that the duel was a lover's quarrel gone wrong. Uh, this is the theory put forth in the 1986 uh, fictional uh, film depiction of Caravaggio's life. And fun fact, in the film, uh, Tomasoni is portrayed by young Sean Bean in what would be the first of his many on-screen deaths. Uh, so, uh, uh, so did uh, Caravaggio kill his lover Tomasoni? Well, uh, Caravaggio was believed to be gay or bisexual by many of his contemporaries. That belief arose primarily from a single radical painting by the artist, which he titled Love Conquers All. Here, we have a painting of Cupid, but it's not your typical ethereal Cupid, oh no. This is a fleshy, sweating Cupid, whose grin pretty much signifies, hey, when are we gonna fuck? <laughs> so, uh, the painting is released to the public and Rome begins to whisper. In fact, uh, Caravaggio's artistic rival, Baglioni, goes on to parody the painting in his own inferior work titled Sacred and Profane Love. Here, a heavenly angel comes down and rescues Cupid from a sodomizing devil. And if we zoom in on the hideous devil's face, we see that it's a portrait of Caravaggio, the ultimate artistic burn. So. Most historians believe that Caravaggio probably had physical affairs with men, but there is no evidence of him or Thomas and Tomasoni ever being lovers. In fact, historical evidence points to the fact that the duel was probably held over a woman. Because you have to remember, Caravaggio was trying to stab Tomasoni in the groin. Now, according to Italian dueling tradition, when a man off offends your honor, you cut his face. But when a man offends your woman's honor, you cut off his balls. Fellows in the audience, be careful whose honor you insult. Chuk, chuk. Uh, so if a duel, the duel was held over a woman, who was that woman? The most likely candidate is the woman here, Felita Mel Melandrioni, pictured in Caravaggio's portrait, which he titled Portrait of a Courtesan. Felita was a prostitute, and Tomasoni was her pimp. Caravaggio had painted his share of prostitutes before, but Felide was different. She appears in his artwork over and over again. Here she is as Mary Magdalene. Here she is as St. Catherine holding a very sharp dagger. And here she is cutting a dude's head off as he screams in horror. Uh, <laughs> Some have criticized this painting because Felitti is awkwardly leaning back instead of leaning forward, but Caravaggio knew that when you hold a heavy sword with one hand, you have to lean back for balance as you cut through the tendons of a throat. So this painting is very realistic. Uh, uh, the question remains, did Caravaggio slay the pimp to protect the prostitute he loved? Uh, we don't know. We don't know what happened. All we really know what happens next after the killing. The Pope is pissed. He is all like, Caravaggio, bro, I've, I vouched for you. And this is how you repay me? Stabbing a pimp in the nuts? You're making me look like an asshole. And now you gotta pay. The Pope puts a death bounty on Caravaggio's head, on his literal head. Anyone who brings the artist's severed head to the papal authorities will be amply rewarded. I wish they put that part into Catholic school. Uh, <laughs> so, so now Caravaggio, uh, Caravaggio has to flee Rome and flee Italy. He travels the south. Maps. Google, uh, no. Yeah, travels south to the island of Malta that is ruled by a sect of archaic knights. And the knights offer Caravaggio protection in exchange for his artistic skills. So he goes on and paints this, his largest painting the size of a movie screen, titled The Beheading of St. John the Baptist. This cold-blooded depiction of a state-sanctioned state execution is painted by an artist who knows that this is the very fate awaiting him should he ever return to Rome. 
but it is also painted by an artist who knows what it's like to stick a blade into still breathing flesh as the blood gushes out. In a way, the blood of St. John is the blood on the artist's hands. And perhaps that is why Caravaggio signs his own first name, Michelangelo, within that blood. This is the only painting he has ever signed. Uh, the knights eat the shit up because obviously it is a masterpiece. And for a while, it seems like Caravaggio is going to be okay. But then he screws up, as always, in 1608. Another drunken brawl breaks out, and he, or Caravaggio seriously fucks up one of the knights. Uh, we don't know exactly what he did to the knight, but historians use the word mutilation uh, rather uh, freely. So the knights throw Caravaggio into their deepest dungeon. Somehow he escapes and flees to Naples. But the knights want revenge, and they follow him. In 1609, Caravaggio stumbles out of the Astoria del Seriglio, a notorious bar and brothel. There in the street, he is assaulted by four men. Three of the men hold him down, while the fourth one whips out his dagger and slices it deeply into Caravaggio's face. Caravaggio owed a debt of honor, and now that debt had been repaid. So at this point, the artist is mutilated. He is hunted by bounty hunters. He is scared, and he wants to go home to Rome, but he can't because the Pope wants his head. So the artist decides to give the Pope exactly what he wants, Caravaggio's head, and he paints this, his great masterpiece, the beheading of Saint, Ch the beheading, oh, the, his great masterpiece, David and Goliath. Here you see a sullen David hold up the severed head of the villainous Goliath. And when we zoom in on the head, we see that it is Caravaggio's self-portrait. This is the self-portrait of a broken, penitent man that was, who's sorry for the sh terrible shit that he's done and wants forgiveness. Uh, now, the Pope, when he finally sees this painting, he likes what he sees. And when he looks closely at David's sword, I mean, really zooms in on there, he can barely make out the letters H-O-A-S-O-S, which stand for Humilitas Ocidus Superbium. Humility kills pride. Even the painting's Easter egg is an apology. And the Pope goes, okay, Caravaggio, you're a killer and an asshole, but you're a damn fine artist. Come to Papa. You got your pardon. Come on back to Rome. And Caravaggio is elated to hear this news, and he packs his bags for his journey home from Naples to Rome, and he never makes it. To this day, we don't know who or what killed the artist. Some say it was syphilis. Others say lead from his uh, lead paints. Others say the knights got to him or that Tomassoni's brother had his revenge. We don't know what happened. One popular story is that Caravaggio is about to board a ship when he is detained by the 17th century equivalent of the TSA. There were always assholes like this. Uh, by the time he is released, the ship is just taken off without him, and it has all his luggage and paintings and worldly possessions. So he's running after it down the beach, desperately trying to catch up when he falls into the sand and dies like a dog. Uh, this is probably not what happened, but it makes for a good story. All we really know is that Caravaggio is dead at the age of 38. His short and brutish life is over. But over the course of that short life, he painted masterpieces which forever altered the art world. His cinematic use of lighting and visceral imagery continues to influence visual media to this day, up to and including the films of Martin Scorsese. Yet, Caravaggio is much more than a painter of cinematic violent imagery. He is a religious painter and also a sinner. And as a sinner, he understood that sin, perversely enough, can lead to salvation. You can see this in his most hopeful painting, The Calling of St. Matthew. Here, Jesus Christ marches into a basement full of sinners and points at St. Matthew going, You! And St. Matthew is all like, me? Yes, you! You sinner! You wretch! You motherfucker! Get up off your ass and be redeemed! More than anything, Caravaggio wanted that redemption for acts that some might say are irredeemable. And in a way, he was redeemed, if not by the grace of God, then by the grace of his immortal art, which, four centuries later, continues to shock and amaze us. Let's drink to that. <laughs>